In this video, we're going to focus on how we can control and add specific values on specific data sets here. So for example, I'll put here 20, 10, and this one number five, press update. And you can see here now what is happening is this data set here, data set index zero shows this value one and data set number two here shows this. So let's start to look how we can control and add up more items here like this here. So let's start to look how to add values on the multiple data sets with an input in chart.js. First of all, we need to go to chart.js3.com, getting started, this specific link, which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're here, just copy this chunk of code here. If you want to understand this code, make sure you watch this video here. Paste it in there, cut this out, and we'll just put that title in there, save and refresh. All right, so now we have a bar chart. What I want to do is I want to maximize the size, put 80%, there we are, and I want to have three data sets. So I'm just going to copy this, copy, and then I put a comma here, and then I will paste, and then another comma and paste. All right, so now we have this, so let's give this different color. So I say here the black sales, because this is the black bar. It's going to remove every other color. Here, I'll make this the blue sales because this will be the blue bar, which is the second color here. And then this will be blue. Finally, we will have the red sales, which is the first color. Save, refresh. All right, so now we have this. And what we want to do is when we have these inputs here, we want to increase or show this values that we have inserted here in our chart. To do that, what we need to have here is of course an input. So I'm going to say here input and I'll give this ID and I'll say this is number one or uh, bar one. And uh, well, the value we can leave like that. So that should be fine. Uh, and of course the type. So the type should be a number. There we are. Let's copy this, paste, paste bar number two and bar number three save and then we're going to say here button and what we want to do with the button is when once we click on this button we want to trigger something so on click i want to trigger a function i'll call this function our update function nothing special just like that update save refresh as you can see here if i click on this it should trigger something or it gives an error right now because it doesn't exist that makes sense. So let's create this function. I'm going to scroll down here. Function, update. And now what I want to do is, first of all, I want to make sure we grab these IDs here to reference to this. However, when we click, we should see here that this becomes active. by right? just saying your test, for example. Save this, refresh, open up developer tab, click here, and you can see now and I press an update, it shows the value of test. There we are. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure we grab these numbers here, the values of those. Once we click on this, we grab those numbers. So how do we do this? We're going to create a constant and this constant will be bar one, which is basically our ID. So I'm going to say a document dot get element by ID. And this is the bar one. And then, of course, what I want to do is I want to copy all of these. And I want to say here, bar number two, bar number three, bar number two, bar number three. And what we're going to do now is basically, when we click on this, I want to say the following. I want to update the chart, but because we have a value here, I need to grab this value. So you can see here, if I click on this bar one, put it in here, I need to say dot value. But let me show you this, save, refresh. Here, if I now just click on this, what will happen is it will just grab here the number and the input itself or the element. I don't want that. What I want to do is I want to say your dot value and then save, refresh, then click on this. You can see here the value is now blank, which is correct because there's nothing. If I put in here number one and then I press update, you will recognize number one. And of course, so you can put in more numbers and it will show you. So what I'm going to do now is basically the value here need to be inserted where exactly well it depends on the array in this array 
in that array or in this array. So how do we do that? So we're going to say here, uh, my chart. Because why? We're going into the my chart object, which is basically the chart object. And this chart object can lead us to the data. And from data, we can go to data sets. And from data sets, we can go to the data. So we're going to say here, my chart dot data dot data sets. However, this is the data set. So I want to, to say here index number zero for bar one. Let me say here then dot data. Then I'm going to say a dot. And we're going to use here the push method. The push method allows us to insert a value at the very end of this reference array. So in this case, I'm going to put that in here. If I copy this, put it in here. Then we're going to insert that nicely. And we can do this for every other bar. So I'm going to oh, copy this. Put that in there. And that one in there as well. So here, this is for index zero. But remember, we have also index one and index two because we have three data sets here. Then what I want to do here is value two and three. We can save this. If I save this and refresh, and if I now press something, you will notice nothing happens yet. I click on it. As you can see here, nothing really happens. Why? We didn't update this. So the array is already pushed in, but we didn't update it. And we need to update so that the canvas redraws the shape. So I'm going to say my chart dot update save refresh. So now if I do this, you will see it works, but not fully. And you might say, well, it doesn't work at all. It does work, but here's the problem. Chart.js or this how Chart.js is drawing is based on the amount of labels you have. If we don't add a new label here, it will not recognize or it will not draw the new data. Although if we press on update, it is recognized within the system, but it doesn't draw it because we have basically this here that is missing. So if I just put in here a new, let's save that, refresh, you can see here now, if I do this, it does recognize it. So what we need to do here is create another array or at least push another value in here. So let's do that one. I'm going to remove this. Then as you can see here, what is the path towards this is the labels. So data dot labels. All we have to do here is quite simply just say my chart dot data dot labels. And then we can say here push. And for now here, I'm just going to make it quite simple. A string value and this will be a new day. Let's save that, refresh, and then I'm going to say here, one, two, and three, update. There we are. Then what I do is here, I can remove these. Let's remove those. If I press here and update, it will recognize the others as zero. And as you can see here, this does insert it specifically on data set number one or index number one. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to do another type of input. For example, you want to see the range of the chart. In that case, I'm going to recommend you this video here on uh, how you can use a range slider here. Then it will maximize or minimize the amount of data points being shown instantly. So that's a very nice video as well to explore.